Hi, this is a Simply Maya video to answer a forum question we recently got. Now, part of the problem is that our user is following along with the interior scene we did for Mental Ray, and a lot of the settings in Maya 2016 have moved, and they're all still there, they've just simply moved a bit. So, you know, when you're looking at a render like this, it shouldn't really take uh, 29, 30 minutes, really. I would expect something like this in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to run through the user's scene, and I'm going to just make some minor tweaks, which will get a render time from half an hour to a couple of minutes, while I also explain where some of the settings in Maya 2016 have gone to. So I'm going to open up the file, and this is the final render we work towards in the tutorial. And this is a test render that took 1 minute 58 seconds, which is about the sort of time I would expect for something like this to take. Now, I would say that lighting up a grey room with one material in it is a very unsatisfying process, and actually a little more difficult than you might think, because we're bouncing light around this um, quite heavily, it's just bouncing grey light around, so it's actually quite difficult to get this to look superb. You know, when you put textures in it, it's going to look a lot better. So one thing to bear in mind is, if you're following along with my tutorial or any other tutorial, and you're lighting something up that's grey, you know, wait until you get some textures on there to, to make a final judgment and start adjusting quality settings, because things that are very visible on grey are not so visible on a textured environment, so you can get away with a bit of noise and stuff like this. Um, so this doesn't have to be perfect, and especially for a test render, you know, you really don't want to be going over a, a few minutes, otherwise you'll drive yourself nuts. So let's look at the user's scene. So I'm going to start by opening the render settings, and to be honest, I don't want to go through every single setting here and see what's been changed. So I'm just going to bang in a preset, and I'm just going to throw it back to the default settings. Now I'm going to use a slightly larger than default test render size, so I'm going to go up to 720, first things first. I'm going to go into the quality tab, and I'm going to leave this where it is, except for this indirect diffuse. I'm going to knock that down to 0.1. And this is a new setting in Maya um, 2016, so that wouldn't have been there before. We're going to be unified sampling, so that's fine. And under legacy options is where you'll now find the final gather settings. So I'm going to tick these. I'm going to go with an accuracy of 20, a point density of 0.1, and a point interpolation of 20. Now these are the general settings I use for a test render. When you come to do your final render, you want to kick the accuracy up a bit, the point density up a bit, and the point in the palation down a bit. Now, I'm going to bounce a lot of light around this scene, so I'm going to go for secondary debuts bounces of 5. I'm going to flip open the final gather quality. I'm going to turn the filter on for now, because we're using very low quality settings. The filter will help smooth out any overly bright highlights. Then I'm going to go down for tracing, and in order to get the bounces, I'm going to need a higher level of tracing, so I'm just going to go 5, 5, and 10. And that pretty much takes care of our final gather settings for test renders. Now, as we go up, the overall quality at the moment is not fantastic, but we'll leave it uh, for test rendering at 0.25. It's kind of good enough. This will deal with anti-aliasing quality. Now, one of the main changes in Maya 2016 is to the IBL node. So if I click it here, I'll be able to go up here, and you'll see that uh, our user is using one of my IBLs, which uh, in this case was a non-blurred HDR. And this file will be slow to render in 2016 if you're using it. So the best thing to do for test renders is to load in a blurred version of that HDR. This will render much, much quicker. So I'm just going to pop open the blurred version of this HDR image. So I've got a blurred version of the HDR that was used in the tutorial. Now this will just create a, a basically blurred version of the HDR. This will render much faster, but it will still allow the color information from the HDR to leak into the room, which is really what we're after in this case. So if I go into the IBL node itself, I'm going to rescale this because I like to see it. So I'm not quite sure why it's been put at this scale, but let's just go to a scale of 10. 10 and 10, and you can see there the HDR 
This won't really make much of a difference to how it renders, but it will allow me to see it. So when I zoom outside the house, I can get my light from the HDR in the right place, which would be sort of pointing at this window here. So something like this. The other thing I've noticed is a very, very weird um, focal length going on on this lens. So I'm going to change that. So I'm going to click here just to get into the camera shape. And we've got a focal length of 16. And, you know, I can see why it's been done. It gives you the room to zoom out. But you're always going to get this weird kind of fisheye effect, which personally I'm not really liking for this particular scene. So, again, your preference. But for me, I would go up to something like 27, which is a little... Um, shorter than your average 35mm lens but it will allow me to, to sort of zoom out a bit more and get more of the room in shot so I'm going to go for sort of an angle like so okay so before we started this process our user had a render time of 30 minutes so let's have a look now what we're going to get so I'm just going to hit render and I will pause this just a second Okay, so there we go, 1 minute 28 seconds. Now the quality is a little rough, but you know, for test renders, 1 minute 28 seconds is going to beat half an hour hands down. And with the blurred HDR, we're still getting that bleed through of blues here and some oranges here from the windows. So we're still getting the light information being pushed in from the HDR. We're just not getting the resolution in the background and we wouldn't get it in any reflections or refractions either. But the HDR can be swapped out if necessary for a higher res version for final renders, but for testing, Really, you don't want to be waiting all that time, and the IBL in 2016 is a tad slow off the bat. So, you know, using that blurred file is generally a good idea at this point in the process. So we got down to 128. The qualities, it's probably not good enough. So let's take a look at what's causing this. And this sort of graininess here that you can see on these curtains and on this back wall, it's probably the area light sampling. So let's take a look at our area lights. And we've got high samples of 8, high sample limit of 1, and low samples of 1. So let's try 4 and 12. And this should take quite a bit of the graininess away. It will take a bit longer to render, but it will get rid of some of that grain. Let's just come here. Just get a slightly better camera angle on this, although I guess for our purposes it doesn't matter too much. And let's come up here and turn the overall quality settings up. This will get us better anti-alias in to say 0.85. Whoops. There we go. And let's just have a look. We're using unified sampling, which is exactly what we want to be using. We've got our final gather accuracy. It's very low, but it will be very fast. And everything looks pretty good here. Now, by default, for when we come to save the image out later, the frame buffers at 16 bits, so that's fine. And again, resolution, just change it here. But really, test images 720 should be enough for you to get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so we tweaked a couple of things. We've changed all the um, sample limits of the area lights, all three. And we've also increased that quality here under the quality tab to 0.85. And now we should get a render that takes about two minutes, maybe two minutes 20, and looks a little better than this one. Okay, so there we go. This is, you know, good enough for a test render in terms of light and quality, and it took 2 minutes 10 seconds. Um, this render took 30 minutes. So, really, for your test renders, this should do the job for you. Just remember to blur that HDR. Now, if you don't have access to a blurred one, you can simply load it into Photoshop, blur it, and save it again. Just make sure that you keep the um, buffer in Photoshop at 32 bit and also save out as a HDR of course and that should get you to about here now 
as I mentioned this is a little grey and washed out looking and that's simply because we're bouncing so much light around from all grey surfaces as soon as you start to get some textures on here you'll start to get the scene to look a lot better um, so I hope that helps you out just remember that the settings in Maya 2016 are still there also remember that if you change this to final gather to say off and um, or you change it to the new GI prototype if you put it back to final gather it did have an irritating habit at one point of changing all these settings back to default which service pack one seems to have fixed but maybe you might want to check that if you do flick around with this and have a play um, sorry if you flick around with the GI mode and have a play just remember to check your final gather settings haven't all disappeared Okay, so that's basically what we um, cover in the tutorial or covered in the tutorial. I just wanted to do a quick run through of how some little things in 2016 have changed. I hope this has been useful to you. You can always get me by email, David Simply Meyer, or you can just give me a shout in the forum if anything else um, pops up. Okay, so thanks for watching. Cheers.